Welcome to a new tutorial from Burton's Media Group. In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to load a 3D model with Babylon JavaScript. We're going to cover several different things in this tutorial. We're going to quickly look at the Babylon framework as well as using Blender to create a graphics language transmission format file, how to create a local server using Python, creating a web server with Amazon Web Services LightSail for hosting the finished file and then actually creating the index HTML that includes the Babylon JavaScript tools to load your graphics language transmission format model. So I've decided to use the Babylon JS framework for creating a couple of projects that I'm working on currently. The reason I went with the Babylon JavaScript tool set is one, it's got strong backing, it is open source, uh, uses TypeScript as the scripting language, which is of course completely compatible with JavaScript, and then it also allows me to quickly iterate through. Now the, for this current project that I'm working on, we had a tough time deciding on where we're going to go with a traditional game engine such as Unity or Unreal or Lumberyard. Or did we want to have something that could be shown in a browser and uh, specifically something that could do web VR, being able to show virtual reality through a web browser? And that really intrigued me. So I decided to go ahead and uh, examine several frameworks. I was happiest with how quickly I could iterate with the Babylon JavaScript, so decided to go with that. Once we delved into Babylon, we found that the, the traditional file format rather than FBX that it was using is the graphic language transmission format or GLTF which is a new format that is out there and is widely uh, I think we can expect to replace FBX in the very near future. Since we were already using Blender for our tools uh, the fact that the newest version of Blender version 2.8 comes with by default the ability to export for GLTF and it's just simply part of it and you can export it as a binary or as separate files GLTF and the material file and be able to load all that in. Um, I've been primarily using the GLB which is the binary file. I first saw how easy it was going to be to use the Babylon framework when I began playing with the playground and the sandbox being able to import models quickly and easily into the the environment see if they looked right and reacted the way I expected them to inside that environment. So if you haven't played with the samples or the examples that are available through the Babylon website, I really encourage you to go over, take a look at some of the sandbox tools or the examples that are available. It really shows off what you're capable of doing very quickly and easy. And the neat thing is that, you know, uh, they, they've really built the Babylon engine to run at 60 frames per second without any problems at all. And I've found that to work whether we're talking about running on an iPad or um, an Oculus Go. Um, Oculus Go didn't have quite the same performance. I was getting about 30 frames per second for or 35 frames per second, but it's an Oculus Go, so I was happy with that. Um, on everything else, I was getting 60 frames per second and it worked really nicely. So I'm really impressed with it. Once you figure out that that's what you're going to do, of course you need to get some servers set up for hosting this and being able to show this to the rest of the world. Now, it, anyone who's done web development knows that it's a huge advantage to have a simple local HTTP server running on your local machine so that you can quickly iterate and test to make sure that everything's working the way that you expect it to. Of course, you also need something on a server set up so that you can share it with the rest of the world, but for doing those quick iterations, it's really nice to be able to set up a simple local HTTP server. Following Mozilla's uh, developer information for setting up a local HTTP server, they recommended installing Python. I've not used Python a great deal, but I've played with it a little bit. It gives a nice simple way to set up a local system. Um, I did find an error in this. Uh, it's not Python 3 underscore m for your http dot server you drop the three should be just simply be python dash m http dot server and that will start a local server running on your system so that you can see exactly what's happening inside your 
script as you're running it. So I went ahead and installed Python, um, the newest version, which is currently 3.7.2, and set up my own server. Make sure you do set up the path. Make sure you travel to the folder that contains all of your files, and then you can launch the Python server from that folder so that it is associated with that. Of course, Python's real easy. Just go to the python.org website, hit the downloads, and go to the correct uh, operating system that you're working with. I also set up a light sail server just for some place to put the files that I'm working with and be able to share it with the other people that are part of this project so they can see exactly what's happening. Now this is real easy to do. You log in with your sign into the console, go to create an instance, and I went with a Node.js instance. Uh, that makes it very simple to work with. Just simply follow the directions and you've got a simple server set up and it's $350 a month, which you know that, that's a great price. I know there's some free services out there, but I, I really needed something that I I had control of. Um, okay, so let's get into then how to create your script for this project. To get started, start out your normal doc type, HTML, header, uh, and give whatever title that you want. You'll need three Babylon loads so that this will work correctly. Um, the GLTF validator, the Babylon.js script, and I went ahead and loaded the Babylon JS loaders JavaScript as well, just to make sure that everything worked correctly. Then we set up a style for the HTML and body so that it's using the 100% of the width and height of the browser window, and then set up a render canvas that will be showing the materials that we're going to be working with. So just very simple. And by the way, I have all of this code script on my blog. Uh, link is down below in the description. You can see all of this and it's available for you to uh, cut and paste. So once you've got your header set up the way that you need it to be, which this is pretty generic, then let's get down to the body. Now in the body, we're going to set up the canvas ID to our render canvas, which we specified up above, and start our script. The script is going to uh, set a variable for canvas and set that equal to our render canvas. And then we'll start by creating our scene and declare that as a function. Now, anybody who's worked a little bit with programming understands that you're just simply creating a function here that's going to be called create scene. This function is going to run when it is called and basically just simply create a scene, which is a Babylon scene, which we'll call the engine, create a basic environment for this scene, which is doing a scene.create default environment. We're going to enable the ground shadows and set the uh, ground bias for on y equal to one, and that'll be our environment. Then we're going to enable virtual reality. This is done with just two lines of command. It doesn't give us a lot of control at this point. We'll get into more being able to select things, move things in virtual reality in a little bit. But for right now, we can just simply set a, a um, variable. We're going to call it VR helper and set that to the default VR experience, which will create the device orientation camera or actually creates it and sets it to false. And then we're going to enable teleportation so that we can jump around uh, based upon the environment ground that we've already declared. And then now we get into loading the file that was created in Blender. Um, this is, we're creating a building that we're calling Chapel. So I'm going to set a variable called building and use the Babylon scene loader append. The parameters for this is what folder is in. That's the first parameter. Um, it's in the same folder as our index.html file. Dot forward slash is all that's needed. Then the name of the file that needs to be loaded where it's going to load to, in this case the scene, and then we're going to have a function to handle the meshes which will go ahead and create the default camera or light. Uh, actually it creates the camera and the light um, with the true true true. So that loads the building, sets the camera so that it is looking at the object that is loaded in and goes ahead and lights the scene. And then the final is that we're going to return the scene when we're done. So that is the basic create scene function. That's that's the meat of it. 
then everything else is just setting up the engine and getting everything going. So our engine is set equal to uh, the Babylon engine. And then we'll set our scene to create scene, which of course is right here. And if the scene, if we have a scene, then we need to render scene. So we just got an infinite loop going on here until somebody leaves the page and we're, we're just render, running the rendering. And then if there's a resize of the window, it'll automatically handle resizing. So that is basically everything that's involved in getting this loaded. So we've got this loaded. We can then save it to our folder. It's now in my local folder. And here's, here's where I've got uh, everything located in this one folder. And as you can see, I've got my index.html file and it will be calling the vrchapel.glb file in just a moment. And there's our server running in the background. So now let's take a look at what's happening. And here I've gone to localhost colon 8000 forward slash and we'll change that to index instead of index 2. There we go. And it'll load and there is my building. You can roll around, interact with it a little bit, and as you can see we've created a nice little thing. Now this little box here that we can see here in this, uh, we, we get a strange, uh, actually that's the sky box. Um, I did not resize the sky box so this object came in much longer, larger than what the base environment was and the sky box around it uh, is still showing so I need to do a little bit more work with changing the sky skybox, resizing that, or resizing the object so that it's smaller than the skybox, and we're able to interact properly within that environment. Now I have uploaded this model to my server, and so there it is running from the server that I started with LightSail. This is all being served actually pretty quickly from the remote server. There we go. And again, it still has my skybox in there showing off um, not quite so correctly. Uh, that's, that's the basics. As again, you can see the entire code script if I went through that too quickly on my blog site and be able to see how to do this. If you'd like more tutorials on using the Babylon system, uh, learning more about Typecast or actually creating uh, multi-user or multiplayer environments, uh, audio, models, interaction, animation, all that kind of stuff. If that's something you're interested in, leave a comment below. Um, if you are, I'll be doing hopefully a lot more tutorials on using Babylon. So if that's something you'd like to learn more about, make sure you subscribe and like.